Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Andrew. And welcome to Cooking, Cooking Stage, Stage Left. Left, the show where we teach you how to make something delicious. So what are we making this episode, Andrew? Well, today we are making a classic mac and cheese. Yum. Now, there are a million ways to make mac and cheese, and you might have your own favorite recipe or your mm -hmm. own favorite blue box, whatever. You do you. Yeah. Uh, but today we're going to make the way that I do it, which is starting with a bechamel. Great. And then sort of my combination of three cheeses that I like or three types of cheeses and how I like to finish it off or gild the lily, as we always say. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so it's, again, it's one of those things that's a lot of steps in a process, but yeah. it's an easy process. And once you get to it, it's not really that many things. And awesome. at the end, mac and cheese. At the end, mac and cheese. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's the cool part. Yeah. It's winning. Yeah, okay, sure. right on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so mac and cheese, here we go. Curtains, Curtains up, up, burners on. on. go through our ingredients list for our mac and cheese. Uh, so we'll start off with the mac and cheese part. So uh, okay. the macaroni, we're using a whole wheat penny pasta today. Excellent. You can use whatever pasta you want. Yeah. Uh, I like something that has a hole in it so the cheese sauce gets like in there, you know, so there's just like smart. cheese sauce everywhere. Very um, smart. Yeah, yeah. And I just, that's a pasta that I like a lot. Great. And then cheese. Yes. Um, so here's my take on, on a mac and cheese and how I like to do it. So I like to get something, first of all, get something sort of like really basic that'll bulk it up, like, you know, that you have sort of like a lot of and that's really melty. So we're using like a pre-grated like cheddar Monterey blend or whatever. Sure. You can use a Monterey Jack, you can use a cheddar, you know, like, but like a, a mild one. You don't want to use like aged cheddars or whatever. Something that's going to melt really well and be really easy and sort of fill up the background cheesiness of it. Okay, right? great, great. And then you want something that melts really well but has some like, Hmm, some funk to it, right? Sure. So get sort of like something like Swiss or, you know, or French like that. Uh -huh. So today we've got an Emmentaler, which is like Ooh. Swiss cheese, literally, right? Okay. It's got holes in it and it's <laughs> like, that's Emmentaler. So those cheeses, they, they're called cooked press cheeses. And since they've already been cooked in the process, mm -hmm. they melt really well because they cook, they cook again, yes. right? Yeah. So again, so any yeah. aged cheeses actually get kind of crumbly and don't melt really well. You ever mm -hmm. notice that when you try and melt a cheese and you like, you get like something that's really like cloggy and then you get like the greasy part. Yeah. Yeah. You ever yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah. 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 So this cheese isn't going to do that. It's going to melt. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, great. So you got, you got your sort of basic mild stuff. Yeah. You got something that's got a little bit of sort of like, hmm, maybe just a mild bit of flavor to it. Yeah. And then get something sort of really sort of like that's got some, some kick to it. Right. Okay. So then you can, you can do a little bit of like an aged cheddar or I'm doing like a, a Parmesan Strabecchio it's called. It's a, it's a. American Parmesan okay. um, that's okay. aged, right? So it's going to melt better than a Parmesan Reggiano, right? Because it's not as aged. You know, it's, it, they call it aged, but it's not aged as much. But yeah. it's got just a nicer, like, buttery, nutty flavor to it. And that's going to be sort of like the salty notes to it. So you've got sort of like the mild, the funk, and the salt, right? Because they're all going to play together. Right. So that's the way that I like to do it, a mac and cheese. Like, three combinations of those. Combination three of those, okay? I'm not mad at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think you would be. No, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. That's it, cheese, yeah. and that's where we go. Okay, yeah. then to make the bechamel, um, basic bechamel, start with butter and flour to mm -hmm. make your roux. So butter and mm -hmm. flour make your roux, and then milk. Um, so that's going to make our bechamel. Mm -hmm. Traditionally with the bechamel, you'd add some nutmeg in there as well, but we're going to hold that part off. Okay. Um, because we're just going to go cheese heavy. Yeah. Here's where gilding the lily comes in on mine. I do a little bit of Dijon mustard nice. before I add in the cheese. Yeah. And then at the end, we're going to bake it off to get that crispy crunchy part because I yeah. like that. Uh -huh. And then you throw some panko on there. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll... Make it up. We'll have uh -huh. it sort of creamy mac and cheese. We might taste it then. I'm not going to lie. And then we're going to put some panko on top and stick it in the oven and get some brown crunchy on top. Yes. If that's okay. Yeah. No, that's absolutely okay. Okay. Is... So those are all ingredients. Again, not a lot of ingredients for yeah. this, really. Yeah. It's going to be... My mouth is already watering. I, I know. I can smell the cheese so or something. Like, I'm really excited about this one. We're all your descriptions it, of the cheese. I'm been, just like, okay, well, now I just want to eat this. It's been a long time coming. It's been like two years. We're like, finally getting to mac and cheese. So let's like, right. get it on, right? Okay, so... <laughs> let's do it. Here we go. Okay. Mac and cheese. Let's do go. this. Yes. Okay, so we're going to get started in making our mac and cheese. So the first thing again, bechamel. Uh, and if you want to watch us make a bechamel in another episode, you can just basically watch this episode. 
right here. Right there. <laughs> and uh, so let's get started again. So let's put our pot on like a medium heat, right? Because we want to get that heated. Okay. So medium heat there. Great. And the way I sort of, I, I'm sure there's better measurements for this, but like my bechamel, I basically sort of do like equal parts butter and flour to get mm -hmm. started. So I'm okay. going to do a quarter cup of butter, Great. which is, you know, uh, half a stick there. Yeah. And just throw it in the pot. Great. Boom. Boom. Let that start to melt a bit. Okay. And then we're going to do a quarter cup of flour. Uh, and so we're making a roux. And, uh, and again, you know me, I don't measure very, you know, strongly. Right. So there's your quarter cup. Boom. Ta-da! And we're using a whisk because we really want to make sure that there's no lumps in there once we get started. Right now, it just looks like things that aren't going together. But once <laughs> the butter starts to melt, you want to cook up the, you know, cook up the flour so it loses the flour taste. Okay. And, uh... And it will start to, it'll start to go through several stages. It'll sort of be like clumpy for a while and then you'll whisk it and it will sort of then be like beautiful again and then you'll whisk it some more and it'll be clumpy again and it'll be beautiful again. But uh, we'll let it go just a few minutes and uh, let that just become our roux. We also have our pasta water on, nothing fancy there. We're just gonna boil the water, got a rolling boil. We're probably gonna use about a half a thing of pasta for this one, you know, so about eight ounces of pasta. Um, which is different for me. I usually just cook a whole giant thing of it and imagine that 20 people are going to be showing up at the door anytime. Or but, have leftovers. Yeah, we're doing a reasonable amount. A somewhat reasonable amount. <laughs> we're probably cooking enough for like six or eight here, but, you know, yeah. there's two of us, so there's still going to be leftovers. Yeah. Yeah, so now we'll just be rooing along. Okay, so it's looking like we're at our first stage of the roux where it's sort of come together there. And again, this is the first sort of liquidy stage. And it's starting to bubble up nicely. You want to hit this with some heat, too. You don't want to go too low with it. Okay. You want to hit it with some heat. It's a careful thing. That's why you want to watch it. You don't want to burn it, certainly. That's why you're stirring it the entire time. But you also need it to, like, bubble a little bit. You need to cook out that floury flavor. You need the butter and the flour to sort of, like, come together and make the thickener. And now we're getting to our clumpy stage, right? <laughs> you see it? Now it's getting like, it looks oily and a little clumpy. Yeah, it does. I messed up my roux. No, you didn't. No. Okay. Just let the roux play. You can probably turn it down just a little bit now. Just because okay. we also have a heavy pot going on here, so it's holding the heat really nicely. Yeah. So we can turn it down a bit. If I, I recommend going in a heavy pot um, for two reasons. First of all, again, it holds the heat really nicely. Yeah. Secondly, we are going to stick this baby in the oven afterwards, and I like to just do it right in the pot. You know, so Great. it's like really easy, right? Yeah. So a nice iron pot like this is fantastic. Yeah, the versatility there. Yeah, exactly. I think this right here is probably why people say making a roux is hard. Yeah. I think that's why. It's not hard, right? You just, just need some patience. Yeah. <laughs> well, you also just need to know like the stages that it's going to go through so you don't freak yourself exactly. out. Exactly. Right? You don't want to cry at any point. <laughs> right. You don't want to sort of like. Just keep going. Yeah, you got this. You got this. Roux, roux, roux your bowl. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> And now it's getting creamy again, right? Yes, it is. It's looking beautiful. And we've got some nice bubbles in there. Yes, we do. So now it's nice and it's like, it looks a little thin again, right? Yes, it does. It looks yeah. a little thin. So we're going to like, again, another minute or two. Okay. It'll thicken again and we're going to start to do our milk. Okay. Yeah. Great. It's important to know those stages. Like, I mean, the first time you're making it, yeah. to really like reassure that, yes, you are, keep going, you're doing the right thing. Even saying that, it can be fairly forgiving, especially when you're making a mac and cheese. If you're just making a bechamel, you know, you want to do it like really, you know, know these stages well. But with the mac and cheese, it's a little more forgiving. So mm. don't let it freak you out. As we say, don't let it freak you out. Yeah. All right, so it's starting to thicken. So I'm going to give a little bit of a hint here. And I do the milk gradually. Okay. okay, so I don't yeah. do it all at once, and then just whisk, 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 okay. right? Yeah. So I maybe did like a cup in there. Yeah, that looks like about a cup. Oh, yeah, that's really thickening up nicely. Yep. Wow. It's already hitting it. Yeah. Boom. Doing my pasta. I'm making a mess over here already. That's how you know you're cooking. <laughs> so fast. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You can turn it lower now. Okay. Let's turn it lower because it's doing yeah. our thing. Yeah. I'm going to cook my pasta. You can cook your pasta for a little bit less than you normally would because okay. we're using a whole wheat. It actually does take about 11 minutes to get it al dente. 
Yes. So we maybe do it for like nine or ten. I have reserved a little bit of the milk mm -hmm. uh, because as we put the cheese in, it might start to thicken a lot really quickly. Sure. So I'm going to reserve a little bit of the milk so we can pour some in, uh, you know, get just a little bit more. Okay. But like you want to reserve like a cup in there to hit for like later after it starts to get super thick and put sure. some milk back in. Yeah. And this is the point that you're going to want to start to do stuff, right? Okay. So now it's like, now it's looking like thick cream, right? Yeah. And it's going to, at this point, it's going to start to go fast in terms of the thickening, right? Okay. So now I'm going to take some good Dijon mustard. Yeah. I don't know, that's a hefty tablespoon or a hefty teaspoon maybe. Yeah. You know? Sure. And it's going to give it a little bit of like, hmm, at the back. Oh yeah. People are going to be like, what's that? Oh yeah. You know, it's, and you're just going to be like, I, I've just been cooking a long time on it. I can't even tell you. Um, that'll keep your secret, right? Um, <laughs> now I'm going to start in with some cheese, right? Okay. You know me. As we were setting stuff up, Megan was like, are there measurements for this? No, just enough, right? Just enough. Um, I mean, that's I'm looking at this. This is maybe looking like five cups of cheese altogether. That look, yeah, grated, I was gonna say, yeah. You know, five cups of grated cheese. Um, and so let's let's test this out, see how it's going. I'm gonna do a little okay. bit of handful. And again, first you put in your, your mild melty one. Right? Okay. First you put in your sort of like mild one that's going to sort of like be your backbone, right? Yep. And see how that's getting it yep. texture right there? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so. It's getting really thick now. Yep. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Mild backbone. Great. <laughs> and really, again, whisk it so it's not going to, you know, stick in there. And again, see, it's really, it's kind of simple. Yeah. It's a slow process, but it's kind of simple. And it's mostly stirring. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. It's mostly stirring. It helps have an extra hand, sort of helping yeah. out. But you can totally do this stir with one hand and plop with another. Oh, heck yeah. Um, now we're going to put in our one that's going to have a little bit of sort of, hmm, like, you know, like, again, this is an Emmental or a Gruyere, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like melty, but has a little bit of like a nice, mm, mm hmm, you know? That, and you see, again, it's still kind of liquidy, right? You know, we're mm -hmm. not getting like, Cheese sauce. No, it's not right? crazy. Yeah. We're going to want to play with, you know, we're going to sort of want to have that have some liquid to it when we put our, right. our pasta in. Okay. Um, and this one you don't have to do as much of. You okay. Know, you can sort of hold that. I also like to reserve a little bit of cheese to put on top when we're going to put it in the oven. Yeah. So, yeah. And most of that's going to be, again, our last cheese, which again is sort of like going to be your salty aged one, right? Yeah. You know, so this is going to be either a very aged cheddar, aged gouda, or I like to use like again, sort of some version of like a parmesan or something sure. like that that has like a little bit of like saltiness, nuttiness to it. Yeah. That gives it like that that other depth of flavor there. Now we got a nice thick, creamy, cheesy sauce, right? Mm -hmm. See how thick that is. I think maybe we need to do a taste of this. Oh so yeah, it. I mean, it's be a little. Just just to make sure. See how it's just got a nice thickness to it there, yeah. right? Just sort of like coats the spoon, as they say. Yep. It can be a little thicker, you know, but you don't sure. want less than this. Mmm. Yeah. Uh huh. That's like a grown-up mac and cheese, right? Oh, that yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's also good to have it sort of somewhat really liquidy at this point, because also when we put the pasta in, yeah. and we're gonna cook the pasta in there for just a little bit, the flour from the pasta is gonna do the same thing that the flour initially did, right? So that's gonna be another thickener in all the fat that we put in there. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna start to get, it's gonna start to get a little drier. Yeah. And not, not as creamy. Um, if, you, if you like a creamy one, as soon as you put the pasta in, you can put a little bit more milk and eat it right away. But again, I like that sort of like little bakedness to it, right? Totally. That cheesy bakedness to yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. that's my, my preference. That sauce is looking beautiful. Oh, it, it looks, looks like gorgeous. Yeah, it looks like a blanket. It does. It's just like <laughs> it's about to it's about to cover up all of that pasta. Is what it it's is, about yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. Envelop the pasta. Yep, yep. A comforting blanket that is mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay, so I did a real quick drain on the pasta. Yeah. There's still some moisture on there. Don't make it cold. Don't pour cold water on your pasta ever, unless you're making pasta salad. Oh, do people uh, do that? Yeah. Oh, that's a great thing. okay. All right, now pasta going right in. Yep. Going right in. Do this it. pot's gonna be so full. Oh my I'll gosh. switch out with you there. Okay, there you great. You can take Thank that. you very much. Just I'll... stir it up, stir it up. Yep. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Yeah, give it good stir, scoop it down the bottom so we're not, you know, you don't want any of that now sticking in there. 
And you also, again, like we said, you want all that good cheesy sauce to go into the holes of the penne yeah. pasta there, right? Oh, yeah. To give that a good... And again, if you like a nice creamy pasta, this looks delicious. Mm -hmm. You can let this cook for like maybe like three or four minutes as it is. Yeah. And then just scoop it out into some bowls and you've sure. got instant pasta. Yeah. Another quick trick is that you can actually just throw some, you know, toasted breadcrumbs on it there. You know, like sure. creamy and then just put it on and just serve it with some breadcrumbs. But again, we're going to do a little bit of a bake action with it. Cool. Yeah. Now here's what I'm going to do with my with my breadcrumbs. I have okay. a panko breadcrumb. I'm going to take the last of that little bit of like French cheese there. Nice. Or the, I'm sorry, the Swiss cheese. I'm going to put the breadcrumbs in a little bit in there. I'm going to put some of this uh, Parmesan here. Give that a little bit of a mix. And what this is going to do is it's adding some fat to your breadcrumbs too, so it's going to brown a little bit nicer. It's going to give you some nice, you know, so... You can always add some, you know, butter or some olive oil to your breadcrumbs before you sprinkle it on top of stuff. Yeah. And it will sort of help it brown a little bit nicer and give it a little bit more flavor instead of just being like, this is just dry bread. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a good idea. It's such a good idea. Yeah. We've got good stuff. That's what we do. We give you good ideas. This is way too much breadcrumbs and cheese to put on top of it, but... Is that going to stop me? No, that's absolutely not. Going to stop not. Me. Right, why yeah, why would that that's, stop you? That does not stop me. Here I we go. Like, yeah, I feel like it's an appropriate amount. Healthy actually. sprinkle. Yeah. Healthy sprinkle. Yeah. I like the crunchy on top. If you can't tell, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. do actually. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah the crunchy yeah. on top is good. So it's gonna be crunchy, melty. Our oven is almost up to temperature. So what we'll do is we're gonna we got our crunchy toppy there. Mm-hmm. Boing 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 boing. We'll stick it in the oven. Maybe like. You can go like 10, 15 minutes to up to a half an hour. It's all cooked, right? There's nothing that you're just sort of melting and making that brown yeah. on top. Sure. So that's going to be it. Then we're okay. going to have to let it sit for a bit because, you know, it's going to be really, really, really hot. And then we're going to eat this mac and cheese for you. Yeah. There you go. I'm excited. Right. Mac and cheese. Ta-da! It's so pretty. Okay. So as we said, we loaded it with breadcrumbs and cheese on top. We uh, stuck it in the oven 375 for about 20 minutes. It could go browner. You can also just put it in a broiler if you want to use the broiler for like five sure. minutes or whatever. But yeah. I like I like how it all bakes together a little bit. Like I mm -hmm. like get a little bit more of that baking action in there. Yeah. Um, but that. that looks amazing. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh. <clears throat> all right, there we go. Mac and cheese, yummy, delicious, three cheese, yep. secret. A little bit of everything. Time. Excellent. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It's still so warm. It's so hot. Here we go. Mmm. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's really good. I don't know what else to say about that. It's just it's just solid. It's mm -hmm. just solidly amazing. Yep. It's got sort of such a nice again, rich mellow cheese flavor to it. It does, yeah. You can up it with other flavors, you play with it, you know, with different cheeses and mm -hmm. everything. I like this this style because it's very sort of like no feels very adult and French or something. It's just right. It's very yeah. sort of like, yeah. I think it's interesting what you mentioned too about with the, with the bechamel is um, really cooking out a lot of the flour flavor because mm -hmm. that, that can, like I think in some mac and cheese, like you can taste a lot of the flour and that's not really like the flavor profile you're necessarily going for. So you know, that little bit of like Dijon in there just gives that, that like mm -hmm. a little bit of like, hmm, what is that? Like you would also add like, um, sometimes when I make mac and cheese, I add a little bit of hot sauce to it, too. That's another way you could sort of, like, you know, punch it up a little bit if you wanted to. I totally do this, like, day one. Uh-huh. And then, like, day two, I'll throw some salsa on it, you know. Smart. Or like, yeah. Or, like, Smart. might mix it up with some chili or something like that. Oh, my God, yeah. That's such a good idea. You can also add veggies into it, you know. You can yeah. do, it, like, you know, put some broccoli in it right before you stick it in the mm -hmm. oven. Something like that to sort of, whatever. It's just a method and just go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazingly so good. good. It's so creamy and good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, there it is, mac and cheese. Delicious. Once again, I'm Andrew. I'm Megan. And this has been Cooking, Cooking Stage, Stage Left. left. Mm. I'm just going to finish this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oops. I hope that's what that smell is. Oops. That's... <laughs> We're on the edge, yeah. Yeah.
long as it's not, I'm not burning anything in the pot itself, I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not quite al dente yet, it's kind of crunchy. <laughs> it's a fine line, it's a fine line. It's a crunchy line. 